Trains in the UK right now are absolutely f***ed. Chances are the train that you try to get on is on strike. You may not even get a seat and the prices are extortionate. In this video, we're gonna see if I can go to Europe, have an amazing time, visit different stadiums, fly there, get a hotel, all the things involved in taking the trip to Europe, all for less than the price of a return train ticket from Glasgow to Brighton. A friend of mine suggested that I go with him to Brighton away in the FA Cup. He, like me, is a Liverpool fan, and he suggested that I go down with him. And so I thought, yeah, why don't I have a look at it? I don't think I could go in the end because of the other fixtures that I'm needing to see um, within Scotland that weekend. However, I thought I wasn't gonna drive all the way down from Glasgow to Brighton. That is a huge trek. Why don't I check out how much the train is gonna be? So the game is on Sunday. So if I wanted to leave Glasgow on Saturday, get there the day before and leave the day after, it was gonna cost me upwards of around 186 quid. An off-peak return was 186, but if you wanted to choose times that were sort of outside of the off-peak times, then it would have cost 232 pounds just to get a six hour train from Glasgow to Brighton, 232 pounds. Obviously Brighton's a little bit further. I checked the train ticket prices to London as well and they were coming up to about 150 to 180 quid depending on off peak or on peak times as well. I also recently saw this tweet from a bloke called Tranmere Kev and he wanted to go to Tranmere but couldn't justify 90 pound, a 90 pound train fare plus 25 pound ticket. So he flew to Portugal, stayed for two nights plus his flight for 77 quid, three games including two big slash European clubs total of the ticket price was 31 pounds so Tranmere Kev and my mate Dugs, their suggestions sort of culminated at this, like in my head. They both came at around the same time and I thought, why don't I make a video to see if I can fly to a European country for as cheaply as possible and have a great time investigating stadiums while I was there. All for cheaper than a train ticket in the UK. So I fired up Skyscanner. I looked for the dates that I wanted to go. I had a free day or two around the 24th to the 25th of Jan. I chose Edinburgh as my starting destination just because I think there's more flights going from there so I had a bigger chance of like going to um, a new country basically. A parameter that I set myself for this challenge was that I had to go to a brand new country. Not just brand new for the videos but brand new in that I had never been there before myself. And look here come the prices. Ireland, Belgium, Denmark, Italy, Spain, Hungary all from about 20 to 40 quid as you can see for a return ticket and looking at the list the one that was cheapest that I had never been to before in my life was Denmark. It's currently 8.40 on the day of our flight. We fly at 10.40 and welcome to Edinburgh Long Stay Parking. I paid £19.99 to come here at about 8 o'clock this morning and leave tomorrow at 6 p.m. So that's another cost. Maybe you have someone who'd drop you off at the airport. Maybe you'd get a a coach or a train potentially depending on where you're flying from but so far I'm not going to tell you the cost of the hotel yet until we get there the hotel is going to be fun by the looks of things um, but yeah the cost of everything so far we've had the parking for 20 quid and the return flight for 30 I mean you can't get better value than that 50 quid to leave your car and then get a plane to Copenhagen and back for the day and the beauty of this trip is that we can pack light. We're only going for a day. So in my bag, I have my like toiletries, just my hair products to keep this looking stunning. Um, toothbrush, toothpaste, um, laptop cameras, and flip flops and shorts. And you'll see why a little bit later on, why I have them, a bit of flip flop action. Um, or thongs if you're Australian. Yes, they do call flip flops thongs in Australia if you didn't know. But here we are now, Edinburgh Airport. Come on, we're going to a new country. It's been so long. Not having to check anything in is honestly a dream, but although I'm obviously trying to do this challenge, it's 30 quid for my return flight. If you were to get extra baggage and stuff, it's Ryanair, so it does cost you more. I didn't pay to um, get my seat either, so um, went as cheaply as I could. So we're in a bit of a unique situation today. I would ordinarily at this time in an airport grab a coffee, grab something to eat, but I don't want to be overstimulated on the plane. I finished my 
Darvel versus Aberdeen video at 2.30 yesterday and then uploaded it and watched it through and stuff so I wasn't probably asleep until about 3 o'clock in the morning. I woke up at 6.45 to um, to get ready and come down here so we're operating on about three and a bit hours sleep here. Um, I'm not complaining obviously in an amazing situation. Thank you for all the support. I cannot wait to go to Denmark for the day today. And it's very, very cheap, it's cost effective. It's gonna be fun to come. Um, however, yes, we are operating on very little sleep. So I'm gonna try my best to sleep on the plane. But again, woefully unprepared. I've done three match day vlogs in a row, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, sorry, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Um, so I need to do some research on the teams that we're likely to see today. Perfect, thank you very much. I usually pay to get my seat on these planes so that I'm sitting by a window or so that you can sit next to someone you're traveling with on my own today and I didn't do it again to save money for this sort of challenge here and I've got myself a window seat so I can film the takeoff as well. I don't think there's anyone next to me either so um, brilliant, this worked out really well. Security was a breeze, airport was fine. the new country buzz and shout out to uh, one of the guys working on the plane St Johnston fan really nice guy I just got my passport stamped by the nicest man ever um, really good start to Denmark completely new part of the world that I've never been to before I've never been to Denmark I've never been to Sweden Norway Finland Iceland any of the Nordics any of the Scandinavian countries never been here before like I said, it's freezing outside but um, I'm looking forward to this so today and I've looked at what I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and visit the two teams that contest the Copenhagen Derby, FC Copenhagen and Brondby. If we can get to see them today, if we get enough time today, brilliant. If not, we'll finish off tomorrow before we have to head home. Nine pounds, so all day for nine pounds. All day, all day, yeah, 24 yeah, I'll do hours. You better steal. Just checking Revolut. It tells you straight away how much in pounds things cost you. 80 Danish, £9.51 for an all day ticket for the train here. 24 hours actually, so I don't. I may be able to get good use of it. Maybe I could come back here tomorrow with that. Here we are, we're at Copenhagen Airport, Lufthansen, and we've got to go to Corgan's near Tor. This is the part I love most about when you come away, when you come traveling, especially on your own. You come out of like a, a random train station and you're like, just like, where am I? You've got to check on your map. I think the first stadium we're going to is just through there, but you have some amazing buildings. Look at that. Welcome to Denmark. Here we go. First impressions of Parken Stadion, the Wembley of Denmark. Just check it out. It's really hard explaining to people like what I'm doing here today. I spoke to a lot of people in Darvel last night and maybe I'm the first and only person to ever mention Darvel in Denmark. Um, but I was like, oh, I'm going to Denmark tomorrow. And like, oh, what game are you seeing? I'm um, none, I'm just visiting some stadiums that might not even be open. This is the reason that I'm here to see all these new grounds and uh, visit the two teams that contest the Copenhagen Derby. I genuinely need a coffee so bad. Hello. Even the cyclists are saying hello to Old Footy Adventure. Side of the road they drive on here. Oh god. There you go, Wes Brown makes an appearance in the Danish vlog. Okay, while I was impressed by the train price, the cappuccino is £4.50. That's what's come out of the old Revolut just now. And this isn't sponsored by Revolut, um, but it's good to good to know how much things cost. Yeah, £4.50. You can get around the city for two cappuccinos for 24 hours. Ah, okay. I suppose not many tourists come yeah, exactly. as much in winter. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but just right through there, there's some stairs. Oh, amazing. Well, thank you very much. Cheers. 
You may have caught a bit of that. I asked a lady in the club shop, do you do stadium tours? Unfortunately, we don't. However, we have a set of stairs next to the club shop where you can have a look at the stadium. And I'm a little bit too small to look over here. But yes, I do recognize this from the Euros. And look, the, the roof is on. I don't know if I've ever really been inside a stadium like this where it's indoors. I suppose because it's winter here in Denmark right now, they shut the roof, but wow, here we are inside the Danish Wembley, I suppose. And look, let's have a look at some of the stickers that people have brought down, all Copenhagen, I suppose, the vast majority of them. Any other like random teams? FC Zurich, I can see there. There's got to be a Union Bears or a or a Celtic sticker here somewhere. Oh yeah, there we go. I think that's Union Bears. Look at this. I could be on a train to London or to Brighton and it would have cost me more than what we've done today so far from Edinburgh to Denmark to getting the train down here, parking. I've got my hotel to show you later on as well, so make sure you stick around for that. It's, a, it's an interesting looking hotel, that's for sure. Got myself a £4.50 coffee, that hurts. But it is good. Let me tell you a little bit about FC Copenhagen, the most successful team within Denmark by a mile. They play here at the Park and Stadion, and it is uh, it can accommodate 38,000 spectators. Although it feels bigger actually now that I'm in here. It's very square and it's very funny looking stadium, but I really, really do like it. FC Copenhagen is an old and a new club. This club. The more modern one was established in 1992, however it is rooted in more than 100 years of tradition. This club now technically represents two teams. So sorry about the pronunciation here. Schobhaven, I guess that means Copenhagen Bold Club, which I think means Ball Club, which is Continental Europe's oldest football club. So technically we are stood inside Continental Europe's oldest football club right now. That's quite a cool fact. And they were founded in 1876. So you think of all the old clubs in Britain that I've covered in the past, um, this is up there with some of the oldest. Wow, that is sensational. Um, older than Liverpool, older than a lot of teams that you will know today. An amalgamation of that team and a team called Bold Clubben, which I think means Ball Club 1903, who were founded in 1903, as the name suggests. There were some financial difficulties between these two clubs in the 1980s, and on the verge of bankruptcy, they merged to join a super club called FC Copenhagen, the initial club. Um, Bold Club, or Ball Club as I think it was called, are actually the record holders of the top tier in Denmark with 15 and the current FC Copenhagen have 14 so they're catching up with their sort of predecessors even though they're kind of similar club you could make the argument that they have 29 league titles although the new one has 14 the old one has 15 the old club also won the Danish Cup as well as other competitions as well Michael Laudrup played for them as well as an even bigger legend than that Nicholas Bentner but yeah FC Copenhagen now, they are the creme de la creme really of Danish football. They are by far and away the most successful team. Although Bronby have rivaled them in recent years, yes, FC Copenhagen are massive. They played in the Champions League a lot, as I've shown you outside. They played Celtic, they played Barcelona, they played Man United, they played Real Madrid, they played loads and loads of teams. Anyway, I think I'm gonna get some weird stares from the guys in the offices behind me, but this is phenomenal. The Park and Stadion is up the road behind me there. I am because I really haven't known how this video is going to turn out till I got here. I've been racing through my mind what I'm actually going to do in this video over the past few days since I even booked this. I literally booked this four days ago um, and I really didn't know what to do. So now that I've filmed in the first location, I've got a bit of a better idea. So I'm going to visit Bronby tomorrow. My plane isn't till nearly four o'clock in the afternoon. I think it's like 20 to four or something. So um, we've got a little bit of time tomorrow in the morning. I'm going to go to Bromby then and see them, the big rivals of FC Copenhagen who contest the, uh, Copen they contest the Copenhagen derby with. Um, so now I'm gonna go to the hotel, I'm gonna show you the hotel, tell you how much it costs as well. And it's a really quirky one and it's got a really cool feature that I'm really looking forward to seeing as well. But Denmark is so nice. Apart from the coffee that set me back £4.50, I've had a phenomenal day so far. And I'm gonna show you around the city as we, I'm gonna walk to my hotel, it's 55 minutes away. I could get the M3 line, the circular line, back that way. But you know what? You, uh, there's no better way to 
see a city than just to walk through it. And I've got a bit of time to kill, so let's go and check out Copenhagen. There are many things I like about traveling around and visiting different cities. The stadiums, the football clubs, the people, the food, the metro, the plane. But the one thing I enjoy the most is the random Scottish stickers that you see. As if I'm um, just walking to my hotel and you see an Inverness Caledonian Thistle sticker. Check this out, these are all the hubs. We're staying in a Danish hub today, a pod. It's been a while since I've stayed in one of these. This is unreal. Check this out. What do we have here? We have USBs. You can charge your phone here, no way. They've not thought of that, have they? Let's check it out. Oh, go on, we're on 26%. We could do with a bit of charge. But look, we've got a little window. We can see actually through to Copenhagen there, but for a bit of privacy, we can close it. We've got our little lights here. I don't know how you turn them off for later on. Oh, there we go, that's how you turn them off. What else do we have? Yeah, we've got more this side. This is, I guess, for a two-person. I'm small, so this really feels huge for me. And this has got everything you need. This hotel has a sauna. Remember, all of this stuff today, still, I'm going to keep reiterating it, for less than a train from Glasgow to London or Glasgow to Brighton, which is where my mate was suggesting that we go. Um, let me tell you how much this cost then. I bet you're thinking how much. That is the big question right now. So I booked it a few days ago. I'll let you have a guess. We're in here. It's a really nice room. Yes, it's a pod. But when you're staying for a day, like, why wouldn't you? just do something a little bit more different. You could say two, three days in it. I could probably live here in a month, honestly. Um, but it cost me per night for one night, 48 pounds and six P. So for the flight in the hotel alone, 78 quid or 79 quid. Phenomenal value in it. A return flight to Copenhagen from Edinburgh and this pod all for less than what, 80 quid. Oh, you may not believe me, but I've just done the cold shower. I've just been chatting to a nice Turkish lad in here. He's left now, so I'll show you the sauna quickly. Here it is, look at that, it's massive. Use it whenever you want. What a hotel. We've spent some more money after my sauna. I have been to get some food, finally. Um, I've not eaten all day, I've obviously just had the coffee. So, um, been to 7-Eleven, got the stuff that is on screen right now. I'll tell you how much it cost. A bottle of water, a mango juice, and some fruit. Eight pounds and eight p. I think that's quite a lot. But then I went to have this, as you can see. Pretty nice food. It did say on um, they had a few like certificates in there for the top one hundred restaurant, I think, in Copenhagen or Denmark, maybe. So pretty good actually. At Burger Palace, just down the road from where we're staying, seventeen pound nine, and with a Carlsberg as well. Um, I, it was so much I couldn't finish it. Honestly, it was decent. 17 quid, not bad, 8 quid at 7-Eleven feels like a lot, but I still feel like everything we spent, even the coffee and the metro ticket and this hotel and the flight and stuff, is still less than the train tickets to from Glasgow to England, so absolutely mad, um, great value with some stuff, not so much with others, but Started to get a bit knackered now. Time check, seven o'clock, got the laptop up here. Gonna watch some YouTube, kick back, and see you guys tomorrow when we're gonna head to Bronby. I can't wait for this. Honestly, I've had the most fun filming today. Sometimes match day vlogs can be a bit intense and you're trying to get the right clips, you don't wanna miss anything. Um, but this has just been brilliant. Loads of fun, really relaxed. Um, and I need to relax now because I've had a long day, barely got any sleep last night. Got about 40 minutes on the plane as well, so. 
getting tired. I'll see you in the morning. We've sauntered, we've showered, we've got our coffee for the day. The coffee in the hotel this morning, £2.30, which is a lot cheaper than the one that we got yesterday outside the Stadion, the parking Stadion. It is time to head now in the cold. It is cold this morning, it's brisk. But look, this is Copenhagen in the morning. Look at the nice uh, different colour buildings there. Got a yellow one up there. It's given me like Dutch vibes. I've really felt sort of Dutch going around Denmark the past um, day or two. So, yep, time to head to FC Copenhagen's big rivals, Bronby IF. So I hope you can pick this up okay. The GoPro is not always the best at being able to read phones and stuff. We're at Colesberg Station right now. We need to get the B, this green line here, on the Hodge, Hodge Tas Trup line. There's one coming in four minutes and that should get us to Brondbiosta Street. And then from Brondbiosta Street, it's saying a bus, but I reckon we can probably walk it. So let's get to Brondbiosta Street. So I actually got off one stop after Bromby Oster at the next one. I think it looked closer on Google Maps, but look, we already have a Bromby sticker covered up by an FC Copenhagen sticker. So the rivalry is already on show here. Big Danish flag flying up there, as you can see. But um, yeah, obviously yesterday's stadium was like proper, proper in the city of Copenhagen. Whereas as you can see, Bromby is a lot more residential looking. minus one degrees here today ah it's actually cold for my mouth to move currently um however happy days we've made it to bronby bronby if in the bronby stadion as you can see up there what is the one main thing that i know about bronby i'm a liverpool fan and one of my favorite players growing up was daniel agar yes we had fernando torres yes we had steven gerrard luis suarez in my era growing up all these incredible players but one of my favorite players was always daniel aga i thought it was a phenomenal center back partner for jamie carragher i always enjoyed daniel aga left-footed center back who could play on that left side next to like a carragher or a skirtle So I've just asked the lady in the club shop and this is apparently all closed, not allowed in here today. No stadium tours, you have to book it. She wasn't the most helpful, but look, as you can see, there's some cool stuff in there. I'm gonna hang around here for a bit and see if, um, see if anyone's coming in or out and can let me in. was formed in 1964 and then uh, it was a merging of two clubs yeah it was okay one yeah and so these are the best times in Europe yeah 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 the first time they went Champions League they were grouped with Bayern Munich Oof. Barcelona who was the last team I think it was Juventus or something like that doesn't get much harder than that and then after no Manchester United Barcelona oh. Bayern München and um, and Manchester United wow that's hard after round one one was leading the group because they really? had a very lucky win over Bayern München. Nice. In the first round, and the other two teams were draw. Ah, oh, cool. And is that the stadium how it used to be? Yeah. Looks like the training pitch is right next to the main stadium. I think that's possibly the the first team over there training. I'm not sure the keeper over there too. I don't want to get kicked out or um, if I'm not supposed to be here. But yeah, look, training pitch right next to this stadion. I don't know how the Bronby section of this video is coming together just now, um, but we've been let inside. The nicest man ever saw me poking my nose in to the door and um, came and opened it up and let me look inside just briefly. Um, just saw the little training pitch right there next to the ground too. It is freezing and uh, I can barely think straight. So um, I think in a minute I'm going to head back to the city, try and get back to the airport 
tell you the facts of the Bromby section. I've got some cool clips to show you of around the ground too. Um, and then we'll fly back to Scotland. I'll wrap up this video and tell you how much everything costs, what I've spent, and see if it all comes to less than just the train ticket to Brighton or to London from Glasgow. Seems like quite a main airport, does Copenhagen. Flies to loads of places, Boston, Poznan, Poland, LA, New, York, New Jersey, Lisbon, Faroe Islands, of course, that's where it goes to. Um, I think that's the only place you can fly to Faroe Islands is from Copenhagen. But all these cool places, it goes to Bangkok as well. It goes to really far away places. But this is us today, Edinburgh. We don't need to check in any baggage. Let's get straight through. I feel like coffees are really um, inconsistently priced in Denmark. The one in the hotel was £2.30. The one at the stadium yesterday was £4.50. And this one is £3.20. So yeah, it was freezing cold um, going around the Bromby Stadium just then. So I've come to the airport and I'm going to give you the Bromby facts as I overlay some stuff on screen right now. But do remember that at the end of this video, I'm going to round up everything that I've spent. Uh, I'm going to get back to Scotland. I'll do that in the studio. So yeah, stick around for that. We'll see how much this whole trip has come to. Um, but yeah, on to Bromby. So they were formed again, much like their city rivals, FC Copenhagen, um, through the merging of two clubs. They've won 11 Danish championships and seven Danish cups, making them, I guess, the second most successful team in Denmark. It's a little bit similar to Rangers and Celtic, I think. Two big teams here in the one city, um, sort of dominating the trophies, basically. Um, their most successful period was 85 to 2005 in a 20-year stretch. They won 10 league titles. In 1991, they got to the semis of the UEFA Cup, and um, that means they're the only Danish club to reach the semi-final of a European competition. The two teams that merged were Bromby Oster and Bromby Vesta. I do believe. I'm so sorry if I've pronounced them wrong. It is hard for an English speaker to come and pronounce um, all the Danish words. But I've spoken to so many cool Danish people who speak fantastic English as well. Um, and yeah, they play at the Bronby Stadion, as I'd have taken you to earlier. An amazing looking stadium with a capacity of around 28,000 people, 23,000 seated, and a really cool looking stand in section as well. And the guy that showed me around said the atmosphere at their games is meant to be amazing. Please remove headphones for this demonstration. As you can see, I am back in Scotland now. What a great trip. I absolutely loved it. I wish I had a little bit more time to look around some of the main tourist attractions of Copenhagen, but I hope I showed you enough of it out with the football clubs as well. Um, but for me, I love to go away to look at football stadiums. Of course, you guys will know that, the regular viewers anyway. Um, for me, going to a place is all about um, having a bit of the food, chatting to the people, seeing what the cities are like, but really going to see the football teams. Um, yeah, I wanted to go to the cheapest place flight-wise um, that I could, that I'd never been to before, that was Denmark. Denmark are currently on a winter break. Um, but I thought, why not go and visit the two teams that contest the Copenhagen Derby? And I had a fantastic time doing so. Got inside both stadiums, both for free. There was no tour available at either. Again, I think because it's winter. I think because it's winter, um, things like the flight and the hotel were probably cheaper too. Um, but would I recommend going there in winter? Yeah, absolutely. If you're going to go to Denmark, there are certain things that are a little bit more expensive. And we will be getting on to the final total cost in just a second to see if it was in fact cheaper than a train down south. Um, yeah, there are certain things that are a little bit more expensive, but... I think if you're going to go to Denmark, why not go in winter when um, things will be a little bit cheaper, like flights and hotels? But I think going in summer would just be would be just as good anyway, if not better. But it would just cost you a little bit more for those things. I thought the transport was brilliant. The metro ran really, really well, as did the sort of overground trains. Also, really good, really clean, really easy to use once you get used to some of the Danish place names. The hotel was great as well. You'd have seen that the Pod Hotel, something a little bit different. But when you're going away for a day who needs loads of space anyway you might as well go for something a little bit more quirky the food yep food was pretty decent I had a few good coffees over there as you'd have seen um, and the meal that I had was was pretty good and even the stuff in 7-eleven I feel like you can get some pretty rotten things in UK like little sort of convenience shops like that but the quality over there in Denmark was pretty good the prices were maybe a little bit more but again we'll be getting on to that in just a second stadiums brilliant easy to get to and really nice helpful staff at them as well and probably maybe one of the highlights was the people of Denmark just absolutely great 
Everyone speaks perfect English. I learned that tack is thank you. So I was saying tack to a few people and their eyes were kind of lighting up. I don't think they really expected you to say that because they speak so good English, you can just converse with them anyway. Um, but yeah, Denmark would highly, highly recommend it. Now, let's get onto the cost to see how much this whole trip set us back. I have the grand total in front of me. So the flight was, as I said, 30.98, so just under 31 quid. The hotel, less than 50 quid, 48 pound. The parking was 20 quid, 19.99. The metro ticket for the 24 hours which we used the whole time we didn't have to buy another one um, by the time I got back to the airport it hadn't yet been 24 hours since I brought it so um, fantastic value for that £9.51 7-Eleven the water the mango juice the fruit £8.8 the dinner £17.9 and then the three coffees £4.50 £2.30 £3.20 it all came to a grand total of £143.82 when you consider just the train to Brighton was £232.40 I'm looking at it right now on my laptop my eyes still don't believe what they're seeing. £232.40 just to get to Brighton and back. That isn't including the hotels I'd have had to get, um, the drinks, the food, the everything else that goes around it, match ticket as well. Um, you know, it would have been upwards of 400 quid, maybe getting on for 500 pounds. But we went to Denmark, which is notoriously expensive. I do think that Things like 7-Eleven are a little bit more expensive. And like I say, going there in winter, you're probably gonna get a better deal on hotels and stuff. But we went to one of the most expensive places in Europe for 143 quid, which is about 90 pounds less than just the train to Brighton itself. I am so happy with this video. I had such a great time filming it. Um, I think for maybe the next one, to get that price down even more, why don't we try to go to a Hungary in Italy where maybe things on the ground will be a little bit cheaper, things like dinner, things like coffee and stuff. I'm not sure about hotels in those places, um, but yeah, we shall see. If you'd like to see me do this kind of video again, let me know in the comments section below. If you'd like me to go to any other different countries, again, let me know in the comments section below too. It doesn't have to be these kind of money challenges or anything like that it could be an interesting stadium a team that you support um, a derby that's up and coming um, within the next month or two or whatever so would love to hear your suggestions thank you for sticking with me in this video I really do hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed filming it please do remember to leave a like if you have got this far in the vlog please also subscribe if you're new so you don't miss out on more European football vlogs coming up in 2023 this is just the start I'm really happy that I've been to Denmark ticked off a brand new country for me world map is up there and I want to tick off as many new countries as I can um, in the future thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one